If you are new to selling print on demand on Etsy, or if you've been selling for a few months and are just not seeing the results that you want, then you are going to love this interview that I did with my new friend, Christina. She is actually a digital nomad currently living in Bali after starting her print on demand journey in 2021 and now gets to do print on demand full time. And it didn't start off easy for her either. It took a few months for her to start getting sales. And in this interview, she shares all of her tips and tricks and what she thinks made the difference to get her those consistent sales. So stay tuned all the way until the end to get all of her great tips and say hello to Christina. Hello, Christina. How are you today? Hello. I am doing really good. It's the morning for me. And yeah, I don't know if they can see, but I've got lots of sun today and it's like 35 degrees. Oh I'm my good. goodness. That's so wonderful. If you can tell... It's nighttime where I am in the eastern time zone of the U.S. It's 10 o'clock at night. We just got eight inches of snow, but Christina's over there in Bali making us all jealous. So excited to hear how you get to be in Bali <laughs> because of your print-on-demand journey. So I think that actually starts us off at a perfect place because your story is just so inspiring where you started and where you are now and what you've been able to build and do with your time because of it. So I think everyone is dying to know, Christina, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started and when you got started with Print On Demand? Yeah. I feel like I've always wanted to make like an income by myself, but I feel like the like big part of it kind of started in 2020 when we all had to go home and work for ourselves. And that was a time I was like, hey, I've got to do something so I can at least leave this feeling a little bit better than I came in to having yeah. to stay alone um, 24-7. I thought it would maybe be three months, not two years. <laughs> but I remember thinking like, okay, I've got one more month to learn a skill. So I started with drop shipping, trying to learn how to drop ship. I think I did like three stores because people said sometimes it might just be the product that wasn't good. And then I got one and I got a few sales. And like, I remember that was like, oh, I can make money online. I'm doing great. And then I had to refund every single one of them because the product was horrible. Oh, and I was just getting like destroyed in my emails. And then that was probably my first experience of like, oh my goodness, I can't just sell anything. Um, yeah, that one hurt. That one cost me probably a few hundred because I had spent probably like a few hundred in ads, a few hundred for the product, the refunds, the website. Um, oh, no, I'm so glad that that wasn't like discouraging for you to stop trying with e-commerce. Oh my gosh, I really could see a lot of people that just completely turning them off and be like, well, I tried it. But obviously you kept going because here <laughs> you are now. So yeah, it did stop me for a little bit. I had tried a few other things. I then tried digital marketing because that's what I was doing for my job. Um, so I tried offering services on Fiverr. And then my work found out and apparently that <laughs> broke the non-compete clause so that I was forced to shut that one down embarrassingly. And then so I was like, hey, maybe the side hustles are not what I should be focusing on right now. So I started learning um, just how to draw. So I was just like something I always wanted to do. So then mm -hmm. I had enough time. So I started drawing in a notebook and then my boyfriend, now fiance, bought me an iPad because I had talked about how much I wanted to learn how to like draw online um, yeah. so then I could erase things. So I started drawing and then I started doing um, portraits for people, like doing pet portraits and like people portraits just for like friends and family. And then I tried putting them on Etsy and that was kind of my first experience on Etsy. And that one actually was my first actual taste of making some money on the side. Um, I think my first month I made like $300 and then it like slowly grew. And, and when was this? This was probably, I think this was summer of 2020. Okay. So back then there wasn't that many people doing the portraits, but the problem is I was still working my nine to five. And then kind of what happened was I got an influx of orders and I had promised, I think people like a week turnaround, but I was also working my nine to five. And then I was also at the same time having to lower my prices because more and more people were kind of like getting on Etsy at that time to do the portraits. So at that time, it just like kind of hit an end where it was like, I do not have the time to do this. I was charging like $35 for a portrait and, but it was taking me an hour or two to do them. Yeah. So after a while, it's like, okay, I'm making my own money, but I am like 
burnt out. I am working so much like on top of like my nine to five and stuff. So that one kind of like slowly died off. Um, I ended up closing that store, but I was like, I already know Etsy at least. So I remember looking up like different things that I could sell on Etsy on YouTube. And I know you said you found out about Printed the Man through Life Hacker Couple. Yeah, or... that's the first video I ever saw was the Life Hacker Couple. Uh, they've got a great YouTube channel. If anyone that's watching hasn't seen it, uh, they don't post a ton anymore. But yeah, they were exactly who got me into it too. Exactly. And I think back when I was looking, that's when they were at their height of posting as well. I know I was seeing new episodes coming out from them. So I was like, oh, this sounds great. Like, okay, I can still do Etsy because I kind of already know Etsy. And I've like, I really believed in Etsy since I could already see the power of like the getting the digital portraits at least. So I had the faith in Etsy. I just needed the product. And I'd already been practicing like drawing, playing on Procreate, Canva and stuff. So I already knew the design platforms. I wasn't like a graphic designer by any means. But you knew but... how to use the software. So you're like, this kind of seems like it matches up with the skills you already have. So it seemed like a perfect fit. So when did you actually get started with Print On Demand then? So I think I, I, think I opened my store in February 2021, but I didn't really work on it. I think I listed like a few things. And then I think March 2021 is when I started like adding a few more things. I think it maybe had like 50 listings. I honestly wasn't going like too crazy on it. But then I remember, I think it was five weeks after starting my store is when I got like the first like cha-ching. I was oh. like, <gasps> The I made an one. order. So yeah, yeah. I remember and I was like, wow, that's really, really cool. And I don't know about you, but when you got your first sale, if it was like, this is it now. This is my life now. I've seen <laughs> it work once. So I went like hard in designing. Yeah, um, no, it was really similar for me. I got my first sale and then got suspended though for a month. The same oh, day. for a month, so a whole month, because it was the you know pandemic when I started, and so Etsy wasn't getting back to people to give their shops back quite as fast. So heads up to anyone who started their shop. Sometimes they suspend people on accident, and you just ask them to reopen it, and they do. Nowadays, it's a few days, but I yeah. was the same way. I tried starting my own website and made like fifty designs in the month that I was off. But I was so glad to be back on Etsy because building your own website's really hard. So it's a lot, and like driving traffic is so much work too. Like. I worked in digital marketing and I was like, I do not want to be doing ads on my off time as well. So Etsy driving the traffic for free was like always my huge selling point on using Etsy. Yeah, and, for um, sure. So then you started listing a bunch more on there after you'd gotten your first sale. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was slowly started listing. I think I started making like, I think it was at like $300 profit for a few months. And I honestly wasn't going, like I was adding to my store and getting better as you know, like when you first start, your listings are really, really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at them later. I was like, oh, what was I thinking? And then I remember in October 2021, the funny kick behind my major adding to my store was I got in trouble at work. I was still, I still argue to this day that I was right. Um, but I was, I was new at this job and they were a little harsher than I was used to. And I got in trouble and I remember being so angry and I was like, I'm still right, but I couldn't fight back because it was against the higher ups. Again, still arguing that I was right. And then I, I used you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I used that as like I was so mad. I remember sitting there for like a week and I was like, I am going to quit this job. I'm doing anything on the store to make it work. I remember that week, like every hour I could, I was just adding to my store. And then I think combined with that, that was October. So like the start of Q4 sales were like, do, do, do. And then like just kicked off. And then I think November and December, I made about 12K profit each month. Wow. Which so all of a like, sudden you made like $300 for all of your first months combined. And then two months in a row, bam, bam, 12 grand profit, not revenue. That's what yeah. you can actually take home and keep. Do you know what your revenue was for 2021 by chance? I would need to go look at it. Even back then it was a little, I think I was at like 33% profit when I had calculated. So whatever the quick math on that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just curious. So no, that's super exciting. I know my first November I had a skyrocket in sales and then I was absolutely hooked. So it sounds like it was the same for you because you kept going and had a super successful 2022. Yeah. So my whole thing was like in 2021, like I knew Q4 based on like things I've learned. And I have a few friends in e-commerce who were like, hey, you did great in Q4. Great. But that does not mean January and February are going to be like, you're going to be able to quit your job. 
So I like, remember I wrote down on like my vision board. It's like, if I can make at least 10 sales a day in January, February, then I can quit my job because that was like enough profit to like just be making around what I was making in my nine to five. And yeah, I kept up with about 15 to 20 sales January and February each day. Oh, well, so let's stop there for one quick second, because I think there's a lot of value in there. Do you have any tips of why you think all of a sudden your sales started skyrocketing? Because I think a lot of people watching have had that same moment at work. Like, you know what? I hate it here. I'm going to make it on print on demand. And some people don't figure it out as fast as you did. Do you have any advice of what you did so well in October and November that got you that kind of first initial skyrocket of sales? It's kind of opposite of, I think, where your top seller came in your first year. But for me, I didn't do any holiday sales. Like I didn't do any Christmas products, no Thanksgiving products, because I was like, what do people as a new person, I looked in every single store was selling Christmas products, but I knew like, I don't buy for me personally, I don't, I would never buy a Christmas themed shirt, but I buy a lot of gifts for people. And as gifts, people are not buying Christmas products. If I got a Christmas product to open for Christmas, I would be upset because Christmas is done. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So I think it was like building up evergreen. And then I think that's the exact reason I was still able to make sales in January, February, because instead of getting the algorithm boost for holiday products, which then completely just stopped selling after Christmas, they had the algorithm boost, but they still had their chances to sell in January, February, because they weren't tied to a holiday. They were like hobby and other products. So I think that was my really big thing is trying not to compete on holidays. And instead I really focused on niches that I really, really love. I can say an early one that sold a lot. I don't do it anymore, but one of my first bestsellers was breath work. I'm super into breath work and ice baths. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that was like one of my first ones. I was like, I see no one else doing this really on Etsy because it's so specific, but everyone who I know who is into it is like very into it. Oh, that's cool. So definitely take a note if there's something you are passionate about. There probably is other people that are passionate about it too. And there may not be a ton of things for sale for that online. So that's really, really good advice. That's fun. And definitely focus on evergreens. And just in case anyone watching doesn't know what an evergreen is, an evergreen niche is just something that could sell all year round. So Take like a mom shirt, for example, could sell in any month of the year as opposed to like a Christmas themed shirt. And so you're giving, making items that are like good gifts to give for people for their passions, probably different hobbies or professions or, you know, all those types of things. It sounds like is the type of category. So that's amazing. So sales kind of started keeping going in January and February. And then when did you actually end up quitting your job then? Because it sounds like you don't work there anymore. (laughs) Yep. So it was actually the end of February that I quit. So I did do the, I told myself I would stick for January, February. It's funny because I was on a little trip to Mexico with some friends and they actually all work for themselves. I'm lucky to have like a very big network of people who have their own businesses who are like super inspiring. So I was the only one in the house during our trip that worked a nine to five. And the whole time they're like, you're making more money. Like, why don't you quit? Imagine if you spent like your nine to five hours working on your store. If you're already making more money on your store, imagine if you could spend seven, eight more hours on it a day. And so I think it was the last day of my trip. I called work and told them that I was done. That was, I remember being so nervous. I kept pushing it off. I was like, I'm not going to do it. And then I was about to get a really, really big project. And so like I went into the project meeting with my boss and he was about to tell me and I was like, "Mm, before you give me all the instructions, I'm leaving. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That had to have felt so good, especially because you were like having, you know, issues and didn't want to be there. So what a powerful moment. So you really were only making money at your print on demand business. What like, you know, mostly November, December, January, February. So like four months into making more than you make, you're like, you know what, I'm going to take a chance. And I know I can make even more if I just keep focusing on that. So that takes a lot of bravery. That's amazing. That's so cool. So then what happened? So yeah, then with my story, I just like kept kind of growing and learning. And it's so funny when you look like some of my best days that I thought that I hit in like November, December, I thought I would never hit again. And then moving into 2022 is when I really started like one, understanding what my niches were, what products for me were selling the best. And yeah, I kind of just like, even on the slower months and that I was hitting what I was hitting sometimes 
in the holiday months of 2021. So yeah, 2022 was amazing in terms, of, especially like Q4, but I was able to keep it up. For me, some of my best sellers have always been sweatshirts. So I did have a little bit of a lull during summer months, which was like sad, but I feel like people are always buying like sweatshirts and stuff. And I, oh, I have, I put everything on t-shirts as well. Yeah. So it's, it's still sold, but yeah, in the winter months are where I really see the results. Wow. No, that makes a ton of sense. I've had a lot of luck with sweatshirts as well, partially because I do a lot of holiday stuff like Thanksgiving, Christmas, that type of thing. But I think, yeah, I, I sell more sweatshirts every year than t-shirts, but I put the designs on both too. So that makes a ton of sense. So let's try and take some actionable tips because I think as inspiring as your story is, I know everyone watching wants to figure out how they can replicate it too. So when you quit your job in February and you had for four months, were making more money than you made at your normal job. Do you have have any idea how many listings that you had at that time? At my peak, I had about, I think only eight, 800 listings was, I think my mm -hmm. peak listings. And it's actually gone down now because I turned off a lot of my oldest listings that are like, I can see those are never going to sell. I think I'm at like 700 now, but my goal I'm right now back in like a major re adding spree to get to a thousand. Yeah. And I think that's something important to remember because over the almost three years now that I've been selling, I've done thousands of listings, just trying different styles, trying different niches. And then when you find what works, you just capitalize on it and do more of it. And it sounds like that's yeah. a lot of what you've done. Once you've done well in a niche, then you make a lot more designs for it, add it to yeah. other products. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, once I have the best seller, I'm putting on like the sweatshirts. I've started with adding tote bags. I feel like hoodies are getting really popular right now. So I've been trying to add some more things to hoodies as well. But yeah, that's exactly it. When I find something that's working, I'm like, okay, we're going to be focusing on that for like the next two weeks and getting as much similar product as possible. Right. Instead of competing with a bunch of other sellers, why not compete with yourself? Add the same design to other items, make different versions of the designs. Uh, I definitely do the same thing. So I know it's easy to look at Christina's story and be like, oh, well, she just got lucky or, you know, something. But she really, it sounds like you had to do the work. You had to do hundreds and hundreds of listings. Oh, yeah. You try lots lots of different things. And I know that sometimes people on the internet sell that this is like a, a quick get rich quick business and it might seem <laughs> that way, but it is a no. lot of work. Not to yeah, say that we, it's hard, right? It's a lot easier than, you know, a lot of other types of things you can do, but you do have to put that time in and that effort to get a little bit better with every listing you do. So you can look back and like, oh, those first ones are terrible, but look at all the money I'm making now. <laughs> exactly. That's why I do tell people like you have to actually enjoy this to make it work because it's not like do two things it's a lot of designing and listing and if you hate the process then you're not going to be successful like i've had so many friends like even my fiance was like should i start a print on demand store and i'm like would you like it and he's like no I'm like then don't do it <laughs> like no then you should not do it that's funny yeah i feel like you never know until you try i know that when I first got started, no one I know wanted to do it with me. They didn't see the potential, which is fine. They didn't watch all the YouTube videos. But then I remember yeah. the first month that I made like four grand profit, one of my sisters was like, okay, what is this all about? And she hasn't taken it quite as seriously. But one of my sisters, uh, I think just hit about 4,000 sales in her store. That's awesome and starting and then about two years into me selling on print on demand and now I've sold like 700k my other sister was like okay maybe I should do it you know yeah <laughs> she just hit 700 sales after just getting started in the last couple of months and she doesn't spend a ton of time on it because she's still working full time but you know I think sometimes people like don't think they like it until they see how much money you can really make at it eventually that's true like, hmm maybe I would like it if I get paid money for it <laughs> Yeah, exactly. My sister just started her store as well. And I think she's hit around like 200 sales, but she adds like one thing every two weeks. So she's like very, very slowly growing it as well. But yeah, she started seeing the results slowly. I think she was extra inspired because she came to join me here in Bali for a little bit. And now she's like, I want to work online as well. So I'm like, 
you could do it. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I think that's one of the biggest benefits to print on demand too, is that you don't, it's not all or nothing. You know, you can do a ton yeah. on it one week, not touch it for two months. You know, I know some people who have stopped doing it for six months or a year and then get back into it and keep going with it and make sales. And so yeah. it really is there waiting for you in the amount of time that you have to give to it. You know, if you can only give, you know, an hour a week, sure, it's not going to grow as fast as you want, but you're still building towards your own business and passive income well semi-passive obviously there's still customer service but you know once you do all the work and have all your listings up you know I haven't put up a new listing in my store in months and I still get money every single day so that's awesome it eventually gets a little bit more passive you know (laughs) yeah and then once you get big enough I've actually hired a VA to do my customer service now because I realized Mm -hmm. customer service was just not my like favorite thing so I started with a VA this year that's been amazing any tips on the VA because I've been a little bit scared to have someone give like give them access to my actual you know account any tips on where you got them and finding someone to trust yeah I think it was um online jobs dot ph um so she's from the Philippines and I did through four different rounds of testing like an English test, um, a customer service, how you would respond test, a logic test, and then the final interviews. So I think I had like 500 applicants and brought it down to like three interviews and then went from there. And to be able to trust her, I did it like we signed contracts, like confidentiality contracts and tried to remind myself like when I worked at nine to fives, I definitely had information that I had to be trusted with. I was like, to do this, I have to find someone like trustworthy. And it was definitely scary. I think I'm I'm so lucky. She is fantastic, super sweet, super kind. I might meet up with her during this trip since I'm not too far away. But yeah, it's just like different rounds of testing. And that's pretty much it. If you ever needed <laughs> some like tips, I can write down my process as well. I actually had one of my friends, like I said, I'm very lucky to have people who have their own businesses. He's got a team of 20. So he worked with me to create like the questionnaires and work on like this filtering down and then even like went through how to train her um, with me. So that was extremely lucky. Wow. Well, and I don't know if I've mentioned it yet. I'll probably add it to the intro, but Christina does have her own YouTube channel, See You Online. And so that might be some great YouTube content to make because I'm sure a lot of people sitting at home are like, well, I would like a VA. So definitely would love to hear more about that for sure. Now here we're sitting in 2023, you've been doing print on demand for about a year and a half, pretty seriously then if you started in October of 2021. And how many sales have you actually gotten in that time? Time. Yep. So I'm just shy of 10,500 sales. Wow. So not as crazy as like, um, like crazy people, but it's been and like, I'm still way making more than my nine to five with that. So I think some people don't realize how much money is in a few thousand sales. Right, right. And, you know, it's not like, you know, if you want to make millions of dollars with print on demand, you're going to be sorely disappointed. That takes so many years to build up the momentum and get the compound interest of every year of all the niches. You know, I think that's Mm -hmm. an eventual goal that you could probably reach. But just like any big business, you're not going to build that overnight. That's not how it works. You have to build a sustainable business. And, if you make, you know, a reasonable income at your job, you know, 30000 to $80,000 a year in your salary or your income, being able to replace that with print on demand, like you said, could be 10 to 12, you know, 10 to 15 shirts a day is all you yeah. need to sell if you're selling maybe $10 profit per item to be able yeah. to fully replace that income. So when you kind of break it down like that, I feel like it feels a lot more attainable. Yeah, exactly. And I tell people just how like, if you t- I feel like it's probably your charts too. Like it's so compounding, like you said, the beginning's very slow, but just one sale can start equaling three sales, can start equaling a five sales because you're just constantly like, ranking higher, finding new bestsellers, adding more. So I just love that about this as well, that it's like, I never want to stop. Because you just know how much each new listing could possibly bring you in the future. I've had one recently start selling last week that had been listed for like four months, never sold. And then suddenly it's just started selling every day. Oh, awesome. Cool. (laughs) That's amazing. I love that. It really can compound and roll like that. So I think that's super inspiring. I think your story is amazing. It really took a lot of grit and a lot of trust in yourself to say, hey, I know that I'm going to be trusted with the time. 
And if I put eight hours in a day instead of going to my regular job, that I can make this happen and not have to go back. And I think that's so cool. So any other big advice that you'd give to someone who's maybe not seeing the results that they want on Etsy right now of things that you really have honed in and worked on that you think are getting you those consistent sales now? I think for sure working on, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but like super specific niches. One of my students, we actually went over their store and I... I did not understand what they were selling at all. There was like t-shirts that had like a joke about a career. I never heard the career. I did not understand the inside jokes of it, but it, on their first month, they were already making 30 sales. And then it, they were one of the fastest growing stores I'd seen just because people who were not inside that niche could not design for it. They had no clue what the inside jokes were. So I feel like the closer you are to a niche and the more you can create products for that niche that maybe other people can't compete with, they can't copy you because they have no clue what you mean. <laughs> but the people in that niche are super passionate about it. And they feel like, wow, this shirt was made for me because it's so specific. And I think as beginners, that's the best way to go. I see so many beginners start with just a nurse shirt and a teacher shirt and a positivity shirt, which a lot of people start with. I think the more creative you can be when you first start, the better. Now, I think that's really, really good advice. Niching down, combining different niches together mm -hmm. are great ways to make more money. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made in nurses and teachers and positivity. Yes. But if you're just getting started and you're not good at designing and you don't understand SEO and you don't understand mock-ups, then it's harder to compete with the people who already know what they're doing. So I think that's super, super good advice. And I really appreciate you coming on here today with us, Christina, to share your story. I think it's just Thank you for again, having me. so inspiring. So definitely everyone go down to the link in the description and subscribe to Christina's channel so you can follow along with her while she travels across the world as a digital nomad. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm here with you know, 10 inches of snow. Definitely jealous. <laughs> well, I'll be jealous when you're on your cruises. So it's okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll send you pictures while I'm on my cruise. Then you'll be jealous. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it was so nice to meet you and you have a great you rest too. of your day. All right. Thank you so much. We'll uh -huh. talk soon. Talk soon. <laughs> Bye.